Hello, welcome back and today you're gonna learn how to use or how to run different commands using the terminals in your operating system. I am a software developer with five plus years of experience in the industry, uh, specifically working in the US, having the chance to work with different projects, apps in the past, and currently working from small projects all the way up to government large scale projects at the moment first of all i wanted to welcome you to become a better programmer and i hope we are able to really help you to become a better programmer and even if you are from zero you don't know anything about programming hopefully we can take you to the next level from zero to even to to help you to land to your first job as a programmer since i know you are bored at listening at me and you just want to know how the freaking thing works let's just jump right there before starting and explaining to you what are the different commands that you should know that every developer should know at least i want to explain to you a little bit about all of these different terminologies that you might hear here and there um, you might hear the console you might hear the terminal you might hear shell you might hear the cli bash powers powershell all of them can be rather confusing and in reality sometimes i still it's a time being with five plus years of experience and i still just getting mixed every now and then first let's start with the console what the heck is the console so the console is literally the hardware the system that is running a terminal a terminal is a session of a shell a shell is a command line interface that allows you to control uh, your computer using different commands. CLI or command line interface allows you to execute commands and being able to, to get back result, results from it. Also, you're gonna hear about Bash and PowerShell. Bash is the Unix shell. PowerShell is a window shell. So I know that this might sound a little bit confusing, but every computer has a operative system. Not even the computers, cell phones, uh, the Androids, uh, your iPhone. So all of these are different kind of uh, operating systems. And based on the operating system that are you that that these systems are, are using, the shell is gonna be different. As I mentioned, Bash is gonna be the Unix shell and the Unix shell is, is pretty much gonna provide the, the, the shell for all of these Unix operating system, which means that it's gonna, you're gonna find it on Linux machines, you're gonna find it on Mac OS machines, you're gonna find it on Android and iOS devices as well. Instead of the PowerShell, you will find it on Windows because that's the Windows shell. So since I'm working with the Windows machine, I'm gonna open my terminal Terminal. and what we're gonna do is just gonna real quick type command prompt or cmd to open the terminal and you will see that uh, it's gonna take us to the current users another thing that i wanted to do is to use git bash now git bash this is something that you might not have if you're fairly new to programming but the way you get git bash is by installing or it's just by googling let's just gonna go ahead and google it and let's try git bash download and you'll find under downloads git pretty much git is a version control i, I know it, it might sound confusing and by downloading the version control or the commands to execute or to, to to run version control you're gonna be able to download at the same time git bash now why am i showing you git bash remember as i'm gonna go i was telling you about bash and bash is the unix shell technically without git bash without installing git bash i'm not able to run any kind of commands that are run in bash in linux in, in unix machines so if you're using a mac os or a linux machine most likely whenever you open the terminal quote unquote command prompt for windows users you're gonna be able to execute all of these commands that are gonna run under git bash if you're a windows user the commands are gonna be different as the commands from powershell or bash change here and there so the first thing that we want to learn here is to change directory if you notice we open a terminal that's gonna tell us that the current location where we are right now so that's how we're uh, current users folder what i'm gonna do is to change directory and change directory we are gonna use cd we're gonna use cd and since i know the names of all of these folders we can find for example a folder called downloads or we can just go back and if you want to go back you can just 
simply do CD and just simply add uh, two dots or two periods and then press enter and you just go back into the to the main users folder so for example let's take a look at my current user you will see all of the folders that i have in this user and remember i was playing here changing directory with bash remember this is bash you're gonna change directory uh, using cd and literally you simply type the name of the folder so in this case if we're gonna select for example you want to go to the documents folder we're gonna type documents if you want to go back into the main folder once again cd and two, two periods and then enter now sometimes you might not know exactly the whole name of the folders and you can just type cd and start typing let's say docs and if you press uh, the key tab or the tab key you will start noticing that it will populate for you or auto populate whatever matches the name that you started typing at the beginning so i type docs and after pressing the the key tab it auto populated to the documents for example if we have the downloads we do cd dow and then we press the key tab it will show the downloads uh, folder uh, name and then the only thing that we need to do is to press on enter but enough of that we can go back into our main folder now if we want to do this in windows machines we can do this the same using cd we can do the cd and then uh, documents pressing key tab press you go to that folder we go do cd period enter we go back to the main folder perfect now what we're not what we want to do is to list or to see the all of the folders or, or all of the files available in that particular folder or in the current folder where we are so right now i am under the users folder which is andrea so if i type ls it will display the list of all of the files that i have in that folder you take a look at that you will see webbr you will see videos as well orban vpn unity all of the stuff is gonna be there in command prompt or in windows machines this doesn't work with ls so what we're gonna use is dir or dir and it will display all of the files that we have in the current location perfect now the next thing is that sometimes you just want to clear out the terminal you have a lot of stuff going on and you just just want to clear the history of inputs and outputs that you have in the terminal such as these things or these things for the command prompt in that case we can use the clear command if you type clear you will see automatically it will empty it, empty it out all of the inputs and outputs that we have in the history for windows machines in the in command prompt what we can do is to use the cls command press enter and it's gonna do the same thing it's gonna clear out everything now what about creating a new file let's create a new file using the touch touch command so we'll type touch and then we're gonna give it the name whatever name we wanna give it so in this case let's gonna call created from bash.txt now you might not notice that this file was created but in reality it was created one thing that we can do is to check and remember we can check all of the list of files using ls and it will start checking there it is you'll find the created from bash and if you're not sure i mean right now i have the user interface you can just simply find the created from bash text file now this doesn't work the same in a windows machine if you use command prompt we'll have to use this call command and uh, we will use this greater than signs so double times the greater than sign and you use once again type the name of it so we're gonna call it created from cmd txt file and i want to check and uh, you're gonna notice that the create from cmd.txt file was created perfect now in reality i don't want to use this file anymore so i want to delete it how do we delete the way we delete it is by using the rm command for bash so we're gonna do rm and then we're gonna type the name of the file the file name is gonna be created from bash and remember you can still use the key tab if you want to type the whole name or you just want to try to find the names that matches so if we do this uh, this did not work let's try one more time let's try to delete this create credit from bash txt 
Okay, so I had issues, typo errors probably, but if you do rm and the name of the file, once again, it's gonna be deleted. In the case of the command prompt, what we're gonna use is the del command, the del el command, and then the name of the file. In this case, we name our file create from cmd.txt. Once again, if you check this, you will not find that file anymore. So that's perfect. Now, we have changed directory, we are displaying the list of files, we have cleared the whole terminal, we are able to create a file, we are able to remove a file. Now, if you, for example, if you are in the terminal, let's start typing like, for example, change to downloads. Or we're going back to the main, the main folder, right? Now, if you stop pressing the key up or the key down, you will start finding the history of commands that you have executed. This is especially useful if you are repeating or using similar commands over and over and you just don't want to type it all the time. Try it, key up, key down, you will see the history of all the commands that you have used in the past. The same thing happens if we use it on bash. Key up down you will see the history of the commands finally but not least we're gonna learn how to copy a file from one location to a different location in git bash or in bash what we're gonna use is gonna be the cp command so we're gonna have the cp command and then you're gonna find the location of the file and you're gonna also add the name of the file i don't want to move any of the existing files i'm just gonna create a new one just for showing you at the moment we have created our file. Now, well, what I want to do is to copy it and I want to use the cp command and I'm going to type hash bash, test bash .txt, and I'm going to tell it the location or the new folder where we are wanting to copy that file. Let's take a look at this. Uh, we have from bash, from cmd folder. So I, I did that before recording the video just to make it easy. But here we type from bash folder and we press enter and we change directories. So we go now to from bash, bash folder. And now we see or we list all the files. You will find out that the file effectively got copied. For Windows users, if you are using the command prompt, the command that you need to use is gonna be the x copy. And it's gonna be a similar thing. You're just gonna type the name of the file or the location and the name of the file. In this case, I'm going to create a file and I'm going to call it test cmd txt and I'm going to copy x copy and then test cmd txt. And once again, I had already created a folder called from cmd and the command prompt even tells you that one file has been copied. If we can double check, you want to double check, let's see. It will change directories from cmd and then we list all the files available. You will see that testcmd.txt is available for you. One thing that I wanted to tell you is that sometimes you will have to run some commands uh, or, or you will have to run these terminals uh, using like super user or user administrator uh, privileges. Why? Because, because certain commands or certain files don't allow you to, to be accessed, manipulated or deleted, edited, whatever you want to do with those files, folders, to just with, with any regular privileges. Now, if your current user has a super admin or user administrator privileges, you're probably not going to have any issues. But if you need to run the terminal using higher user privileges, what we're going to do is we're going to type, for example, cmd and instead of left clicking there we're gonna right click and you will notice that you can run it as an administrator once you run it as administrator you will find out that the current or the like default location or the term terminal uh, takes you to is gonna be different it's not gonna be the current users here it was gonna be the windows the system 32 folder you can always just change the location using this cd command but that was just a little tip for you to know in the future. For Linux machines, for Unix uh, users, most likely what you'll have to do is execute all of your command. But before executing the command, you have to use the sudo command. That pretty much will allow you to get higher privileges if you have, of course, on, on your current user for your Unix machine. Now, every time that people look at this, <laughs> 
I can guarantee you that your, your sister, your, your mother, your dad, your, your friends, they, they look at you looking at terminal and they might think that you are a hacker. Developers not necessarily are hackers and just because you know terminals here and there, you can hack uh, somebody else's Facebook, Facebook account or anything like that. In reality, that that's none of that. So don't think that you're gonna be a hacker just because you know all of these commands. It's just essential and it's something that you're gonna need, especially as you start uh, the developing, uh, start working, programming jobs on a daily basis. There you go and hopefully this simple tutorial was really helpful for you. I can guarantee you that you might want to know this before starting anything. Uh, it might seem dumb at the moment but any developer will need this and I've literally I've known developers that are claimed to be senior developers who don't know how to use the terminal. Sometimes it's, it's frustrating, although you don't really need to know the terminal, but it's helpful and it's, it's really important for you and it's critical sometimes for you to understand how to use these commands uh, whenever you have access to, to all of these user interfaces and especially whenever you are, for example, trying to access machines using the command. Anyways, hopefully you like this. Please let me know in the section below, in the comments below, what what kind of commands did you know if you had knowledge about any of them and if you had any idea about what the shell was was or what the terminal was or what the console console was bash powershell if you knew any of these things and if you had other commands or that you have used or commands in the past that might be useful for other people to know but i believe that the ones that i mentioned here are going to be the essential for anybody or any kind of developer pretty sure that they're going to use it at any point finally don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stay attentive to more videos in the future if you want to learn more about software development. See you until next time.